Are the NCAA's rules about feeding athletes nuts? NCAA officials meeting this afternoon to rethink those rules after Connecticut guard Shabazz Napier said he sometimes goes to bed hungry. Welcome to your Tuesday afternoon news hub. I'm Sarah Murray. Joining me now with the latest on this push to rewrite the rules and keep college athletes well fed is WSJ sports reporter Rachel Bachman. Rachel, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. So explain to me how these rules work. How are college athletes going to bed hungry? Well, there are rules about what each athletic program can feed athletes, and that's basically because um, they essentially don't want others to have competitive advantages. You know, have some have lavish spreads and others don't. And so the rules are basically you can feed athletes one so-called training table meal a day, where it's sort of like all you can eat. And then after that, it's somewhat patchwork. You can feed them around competitions and vacations, things like that. But there are gaps, especially for athletes who are uh, walk-ons or partial scholarship. Now, what Shabazz Napier said this, it kind of caused a lot of outrage and sparked this big discussion. Is this something you're hearing from other college, from other college athletes? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it happens all over the country, and it's because this is really a patchwork rule. I think if if um, schools were allowed, as some want to do, to just feed athletes whenever they're hungry, then this wouldn't be an issue. But because there are rules about what they can feed them and when, for instance, they're limited in snacks um, to bagels, nuts, and fruit, and anything else is forbidden at certain snack times. And so for athletes trying to gain you know, muscle mass, things like that, these are actually pretty prohibitive. Yeah, that's pretty specific. And of course, this is happening against this backdrop of a broader debate about whether college athletes should just be paid, kind of like professionals. But does the NCAA really have to tackle that or can they say look we're just going to take a look at the rules about when and how you can feed your athletes well you're right that is the backdrop the larger backdrop but i think that makes these rules um, even more uh, strange because, you know, I think most people would assume if you have a full scholarship, for instance, or even if you're just a varsity athlete, even as a walk-on and you're doing everything that the scholarship athletes are, you would assume that player is being well-fed all the time, but that's not always the case because of these limitations. Okay, so why do these rules exist? What do people think the risks are out there about feeding college athletes, say, three times a day instead of once a day? Well, you have to remember that even in Division One, which is the highest level, there are athletic departments that earn $150 million a year in revenue and those that earn just a few million in the same division. And of course, the ones that earn just a few million are very concerned about costs. So they don't want to have to compete with athletic departments that can essentially serve surf and turf if they want to. So um, that's why the, the poor schools so far have voted down these changes in the past. All right, well, we'll see what the NCAA has to say about that later today. Rachel, thanks for joining us. Thank you.